What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another episode review of Quiet on Set. This is the continuation of the docu series um, that was aired on Peacock from the uh, you know whole Nickelodeon scandal that went on. This is breaking the silence. Basically, I feel like this is the fifth episode, the fifth and final. Maybe this is a, a closing chapter to the four part series that we had um, seen that, um, like I said, previously aired on Peacock. Um, I don't know about you, Mizzle, but this this series, this episode was 45 minutes long. Yes, it was a long. I was expecting a lot more just because I felt like there was a whole lot of hype up to it. Yeah. But I I appreciate it, but it, it's not given what I thought it was going to have been given. And I was just saying this before we went on. I appreciate it. Like, this is our first time talking since we both watched it, so we get each other's honest yes. and raw honest. reaction to it because you just got done watching it i watched it last night took a little bit of notes but you fresh off of it so you yeah. your brain is is sharp with it what was your first initial thoughts about it first initial thoughts i was like when they put it as a interview kind of talking style and then more of a, the documentary that we saw in the last four parts right. i was like okay different so like that. So what they gonna talk about? And I said, if you are gonna do it this way, they gonna be saying anything that's different than what we already heard, heard already. Right. And any the news information that we could get. I mean, every frequent every now and then. I mean, we did get a um person that didn't speak before. When we get to that part, we talk about it. But mm -hmm. other than that, I guess everything else was people who we already saw this black obituary already. So I I would figure there was gonna be more tea that around the surrounding the child stars in the a Nickelodeon era, but not much. So I just felt like this was this. Like, it basically was like catch up. Where are we at now? Right, 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 right. right. Where we are at now since the documentary aired and everything. So that's what it was. Right. That's exactly what I felt like. Basically, what's everybody's reaction now, or what kind of reaction that you're getting now that this docu series is out and blah 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 blah. So it started off um, basically catching up with Drake um, and, you know, how, how's everything been with you since it's aired? How's everything, the relationship with your mother? How's the you know, relationship with your father? How's everything with Josh? Ever since then, you know, what was your perception of, of Dan now that you see what everybody else has been going through? Blah, 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 blah. Right now, one thing he said that I'm just like, mm. He was like, you know, people were coming at his mom and basically saying that his mother wasn't a good mother. And um, what people don't realize is that Brian had a way he was very charismatic and he had a way of just manipulating people and getting people to believe whatever it is that he's saying. And so his mother was just as much of a victim as he was. I'm sorry. I got to call bullshit on that. Yeah, too. I definitely did too. And I I told uh, we were texting each other back then when I told you how I feel about that segment. Cause I was like, granted, that's your mom. I guess you don't want to go against her, you don't bash mm her -hmm. like that. But I was hoping that he would hold on more a little bit more accountable for her actions because at the end of the day, you was a parent and you was la a, a lazy parent at that time. Right. So not wanting to do anything. And after the father, no matter what you was going through, he told you not to let your that part. Let your son out of your sights with this guy, and you did anyway. So I feel like you messed up. The mother messed up for him mm -hmm. to say that Brian, no matter how how Brian is charismatic or this way and convincing people, it's like that. You as a parent was a parenting at That's that right. time, so your parent should hold some accountability as much as that. I wish he would hold her mother accountability. You yeah. know, doesn't mean that we ain't saying that you ain't supposed to love your mother. You gonna love her. But I'm gonna say that I would just wish that, yes, at the time, yes, Brian was like that, but I feel like my mother didn't pe protect me when I wanted her to protect mm -hmm. me as my father was. And I wish it was like that. And I probably wouldn't be going through this. So I call BS as well because you were trying to try and do some damage control for your mother. It's still not working because at the end of the day, mm -mm. I saw that she chose not to take you and not to be there and let you stand at this guy's house and everything and until it was too late. 
So I'm sorry, Drake. You can't convince me otherwise. No. And then I know that. I mean, <laughs> is your mother still here with us? Like, is she still like amongst the living with us? This is what I mean. Because if so, she needs to speak up and say something too. If you you want you don't want us to be hard on her ass, she needs to say something too. Because again, she put you in that situation. The daddy tried to warn her ass about it. You granted you were a child, so you really wasn't trying to get it. But as a mother, as a mother, mm-hmm. no bitch, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. Mm-mm. You need to do something your damn self. You at least come out and take your own accountability for <clears throat> for not being there and not seeing the signs and things in front of him. Don't 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 have your son come out on your behalf and say that you're just as much as a victim as he is. Uh, you'll never be the same victim that he was. He was you no, know, you will never will be the same victim. Now, that no matter how much Brian was, you still was a parent, and you that, still choose that. to let your son be one. So that, that part. Was- Mm-hmm. Another thing that I thought was shady as hell, the two guys from Boy Meets World, who was it? Um, Will, I don't know what his last name is, and Ryder. They were two guys that also wrote character letters for Brian Peck when it came to his sentencing. Now, they have their own podcast. Now, Soledad O'Brien was the lady that was actually um, doing the interview. Mm-hmm. And... She asked Drake, has anybody reached out to you? Because again, Will and um, Ryder, they have a podcast. And basically, they they low-key apologized. Yeah, but not really. I think they more or less acknowledged how they were a part of Brian getting off as opposed to apologizing for not being there and having Drake's back. They acknowledge it on their podcast and was like, oh, my God, when it came to, you know, um, the, the sentencing, the mother looked at all of us and was like, look at all these celebrities you have here. And it still won't matter what you did to my son. And we all had to just sort of sit back blindly, not knowing what it was that we contributed to. I call bullshit on that, too. Yes. I call bullshit on that too. I'm sorry because Drake even said, as far as it goes with Will, nigga, I work with this fool on Spider Man. He ain't say nothing about it then, yes. and you had plenty ample opportunity then. Yes. You yes. only saying yes. something now is because people are holding your ass to the fire yes. because this docu series yes. came out. That's the only yes. reason why. I agree because it was like y'all had ample opportunities, like you said. Working with him, and y'all did not talk, apologize. Y'all went to the documentary. Now you want to say, "Oh, well, I realized that we was in the wrong side while well, I did this and everything." And I still was somewhat of an apology. I was like, "Oh, now the documentary that I shouldn't have supported him." Basically, that's what it was. Not so much that Thank I apologize to thing. I shouldn't have supported him. I should have wrote the letter. I should not have been there. It's like, oh, got your moments that oh, I did a messed up thing, and he. Uh, even to this day, I think I don't still think they did reach out to him because no. Drake said no one, no one has reached out. Letter, have reached out to him, even in that documentary ad. So even those two who had their podcast said what they had to say in their podcast, but they still haven't reached out to him. The only person who had talked to him directly, he talked about was Josh, like he said. That everybody was going on with the Josh, mm-hmm. that he didn't say nothing. But she did say he did say Josh was the main and the only one who did that reached out, reached out to him. Out to him. And then it's still wild to me that in the midst of all of that happening when it first came out, Dan was the only one that was there for him. Yes. That's wild. Yes, Dan was the only one. And I said... The only one that was there for him. And everybody, nobody was there for you, only Dan. And and I'm glad that he said um, that it was devastating that other people had different um, experience with Dan. Yeah, and he, that. he said, I can't take away the experience of what he was going, what they experienced him for. So it's messed up. I just go about what I had experienced with him, and he was there. Right. But I can't take away that they had um, a different experience with him. So mm-hmm. I'm glad that he said that because I know I don't care. Then when people say, Well, I didn't have that experience. So no, he didn't do that. I said, How you did not know that he didn't do it? You don't know. He didn't yeah. do that to you. Yes. But he, yeah, I. I, I know that all too well. I know that all too damn well. Now, he also, um, I appreciate it for him. He spoke about having to go through therapy and deal with his own trauma because 
that got him into his own situations that he was in and led him down a path to where he was spiraling and he was making the wrong decisions. And he realized that a lot of that came from his own trauma. So basically he said without saying that he was sort of, you know, repeating the cycle a little bit and it was causing him to go down this path. And that's very, that's, that's, I, I commend him for realizing that and being vulnerable enough to say that in front of millions of people and take accountability for that shit. I, yes. I, I, I with him for that. I feel I agree too. I do agree that he took accountability and realized that he did something. Now I know he didn't want to throw go into specifics. No, but because no. I, I know he was trying to refer to mm -hmm, it. That, mm -hmm. that we all knew. Because I said where he's at. He's at Mexico City. So I said, oh, so why are you over there? That's how I was looking at. It. I look at the where he was at. I said, why are you over there? And then I was really realizing that people were talking about it. And I said, oh yeah, he got himself in trouble with something that was happening. And I don't know the outcome of it. I do know that he played guilty a little bit in mm -hmm. some way, form, but I don't know if everything that was said is truthful or not. I didn't look at the documents like that, but I, yeah, he wouldn't. He didn't want to go into this, no. but I say, yeah, yeah. From he, last I heard, I can't remember. I don't. I don't remember if it was Tracy or somebody said that the reason why he's in Mexico City is because apparently he had said that. The, the people in Mexico City like welcome him and they're so supportive of him and blase, blase, blase. I don't know for sure. Who, I remember somebody saying that who specifically it was. I can't remember. I feel like it was Tracy. But yeah, either way it goes. And I knew that he was not going to get into anything specific of it at all. You know, I wonder is he because I mean, he was. Yeah, I wonder what the income, the outcome of that. Like, is he a, is he on the on the uh, on the Megan's Law list, or like, whoa, 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 what was the outcome of that? Either way, I go. He took accountability for it. He's working through that through his trauma. He says that him and his dad relationship is you know even better than it was. Again, that mama. Yes. I'm 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 gonna continue to look at your ass sideways, bitch. I don't yeah. care what Drake say. What he says, yes. I don't care what he <laughs> says. Girl, girl, bye. Like, I was finna say, as a mother, but hell, you, you're you not even a parent, and you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Like, you can't talk your way out of that. There ain't no, and no. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Okay? So, the second half of this, and, and granted, it was, it was only like a short, I say maybe 10, 15 minute spotlight on Drake. And the, the rest of it was, uh, well, a big chunk of it was about Giovanni Samuels and Brian Hearn. Yes. Now, I feel like, and I had said this to you in a text, I feel like maybe they got some sort of backlash or blacklash or something that maybe they didn't go a little bit more in depth about what the Black castmates were going through. Mm-hmm. Because I felt like this breaking the silence was more focused on the black castmates because they did have, you know, they, they had an actual like sit down in the studio with them and, you know, talk about their individual, you know, experiences, whatnot. Although um, the one guy that played Nose Boy, he wasn't there. No. And then um, that other girl, I forgot the other girl's name. Well, we'll get to it. She, the other, the, the other two black kids that were on there because there's only four altogether. Angela Raquel. Yes, yes. They weren't on there, but um it was Giovanni Samuels and it was Brian Hearn and then Brian Hearn's mom, Tracy Brown. They were all on there. And so Soledad asked them how has everything been? Of course they said the support has been overwhelming, which uh, granted it is and like Giovanni said she had a lot of people hitting her up saying that their childhood is ruined which we've been saying that I know I said that like yeah, I, is. what I, if, if this is what was going on with Keenan and Kel I don't even want to think about what was going on with Clarissa explains it all and hey dude and you can't do that on television yeah. and I don't even want to <laughs> think about hopefully what nothing like that going on with them because that's damn sure what I grew up on um they Soledad shows them a clip from Dan's apology video that he did mm. with Jay Boogie. Now, Brian and Giovanni both had they a little key it. chuckle. I was like, I was like, yes, 
I, I was like, yes, I, they see what I saw. They see what oh, I shit. saw. And I said, that was performative. I Brian said, brought that all, out. Yeah. You knew someone that used to work for you. I told yeah. them another black person to use it. So you go downplay the diversity claims that people had against you to use that who used to work for you. Mm -hmm. First of all, that was biased to me because like yeah. I was having an experience with you. So you need a third party who could hold your feet to the fire. And I feel like the questions was leading toward mm -hmm. him to make it seem like he is remorseful. But then again, it didn't feel sorry. You didn't feel sorry to me. I feel like you just no. got caught got caught up. The documentary came out and put you in a negative light. So now you're trying to do damage control. But I'm glad that he said it was very performative. It felt yeah, like Brian said, you uh, uh, now because of documentary. And Will was your apology then with Jeanette and Angela spoke up. That part. Baby Brian said, you got to understand, he was an actor before anything. He said that fool dusted off his acting chops. Yes, and he did. did that. He knew exactly what the hell he was doing. And you're right. I'm glad that they clocked that shit. Now, they said what made I like how Giovanni said that. She said that the the interview made them feel exactly how they felt when they were kids and they were on set. They were overlooked then, and they sort of felt overlooked as well in the interview because you didn't go into any sort of deep detail about anything that you were being accused of. And again, I said, Dan wrote them questions out for Boogie or whoever, T-Boogie, T-Bars, whoever the hell his ass is. <laughs> he wrote out the, the questions for him to ask him. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, and he's not even a real interviewer. Like, hell, I ain't no goddamn real interview to be asking nobody no damn questions like that. So Dan, he put those questions and he put them together for him to ask. And, and Giovanni said, like, do you, you basically disregarded us back then. Like you disregarded us right here, right. Goddamn. Now you didn't yes. go into any sort of details about it or none of that. Now, Giovanni does say that Dan reached out to her right before the documentary aired. Now, I don't know. And it didn't say, did he know that she was in that documentary? Yes, that. Okay, so he must have knew. They, they, so, said that. they said he knew who yeah. was going to do the documentary. And that's when he reached out. Mm -hmm. And he asked her, like, uh, basically, you know, she said that he was, at, well, not, I felt like he wasn't asking her because the way she was explaining it, she was like, he said to her, like, you enjoyed your time on the set, didn't you? Like, right? Yeah. You had a good time, right? Right, you enjoyed yourself, right? Yeah, to like, yeah, like you you basically wanted her to speak up and be a character witness for you. And I'm proud of Giovanni because she said she told him, I'm gonna tell you straight up, you were terrifying. We were terrified of you. Yes, and we needed a job, yeah. and we and we wanted this opportunity. So we you know, we went along with it. And Giovanni and Brian even said back then, a lot of the jokes went clear over their head as they're doing the jokes. They didn't get it them damn selves, but they see adults cracking the hell up laughing. Yes. So that they're thinking, is. okay, well, what I'm doing is funny. Then I don't get it. Exactly. And you know, it was crazy how, yes, because they mentioned that. And when I, uh, when they re uh, when they showed that clip again, he did make it seem like, oh, it's only an issue now because the kids got older and now we're adults. We see it as a problem. But back then, we were, I said, first of all, look at what you're saying. We was kids. Exactly, we didn't, you we dumbass. Didn't matter, we didn't know. We would think it's funny because we think it's funny. But now you look older, yes, and we're going to see his perspective. But the only thing for us is that those was kids too doing the roles. So they wouldn't know anything better. So if they think the adults is laughing and they no adults is like really questioning it, it's like that, especially the person that they look up to, you the director and other people who's high up laughing. So they think, oh, I'm being, like you said, that being funny. And, and I think I'm doing my job. This is my job. So they didn't think of it. But it doesn't mean that they know that some things was questionable because they said they didn't like the foot, um, the foot thing. They said that. No, they, they didn't the like that. So they knew some things that wasn't good, but not everything. And just like um, Brian said, if you took away all the sexual in, in the windows what and would all you have? that inappropriate jokes, would, did you have shows? And then you look, look, look at it, 
it seemed like it was majority was in the windows. So they really didn't have no shows. It was maybe like predicate on that. But they were using our lack of things mm -hmm. going on back then as kids to not show to not only in the 90s. We all we all had television. It was no internet, so we had TV. It's like a, and then now we had uh, adults who had to who had to go to work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we had to come home. That's it was our entertainment. It's like that. Latchkey so, kids. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Look a lot of raised us. Okay. Monitoring us. Some parents were monitoring what you were watching in the TV show, but no, that was it is. It's like Nickelodeon was like the uh, it show, basically, mm -hmm. and network, Cartoon Network, Disney, all that stuff. So it was like, nah. So now we get older. Don't try to say, like, oh, because we have an issue now. Oh, we should have had an issue then. I said, no, we was kids then. They didn't have it, they didn't have a choice back then. Yes. They, they didn't have a say back then. Mm -hmm. Now, in the um, in the next segment, you have Brian Hearn and his mom, Tracy Brown. And they go a little bit more deeper into their relationship and how him being fired from all that basically like was the the detrimental thing that happened to their relationship ever since then. And this documentary is what brought I could not. As much as I love my damn mama, I can't imagine having a strained relationship that long. Nah, not to that long. Nah. To that extent. Yes. Nah. Over, over, I can't imagine that. And you know what I liked about? Well, it, it was sad to see that interaction between them two because she, she broke down. But I like how she said she watching this docuseries. She felt validated. She felt validated as a mother that what she was doing and what she felt was right was and right. that she wasn't wrong. And Brian himself said he had a breakthrough watching the docuseries back because he was then able to see that and work through that more through his therapy to see where his trigger started from yes. and where this anger and all this was and it's like you you knew you were mad at your mom or, or you know or, or this this that and what other but it's i can't even imagine like i said as much as i love my mama i can't imagine that i agree i was like me and my mom was close too because she raised me and my younger brother together mm -hmm. we all three close so I had my moments, mom, and it made me a day and everything, but I was still taking yeah. her to the next day. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and was, oh, she's calling me, and we're going to blow it down a little bit, and then we reach out, but it was never to that long extent mm -hmm. that we don't talk to each other. So like that, we always get back to what it is, and we probably apologize, make it up, and move on. So like that. So for, it was, it was that um, the mom, Tracy, said that when he got let go, she knew she lost him. From that then on, she knew she lost him. Everything oh, changed changed with him. Cry. And it was shocking. That was shocking that it said it took this documentary to this down for him to watch the documentary to realize it wasn't her fault. And I yeah. said, so that means y'all didn't talk for all these years. All these years, you hold it against your mom. You blame your mom for you not, you getting fired. For And I glad I like also like what she said that I didn't want to raise no superstar. I want to raise a yeah. healthy child. And that's yeah. what she wanted to raise an overall healthy child. And that's what she wanted to do. So it wasn't mm -hmm. about money for her. She wanted she wanted her son to be happy, but not to the detriment of the adults trying to take advantage. But to be on to be uh well, they didn't work in their favor because they fractured the relationship. So it's like it was shocked to see that I was definitely now that they really start talking back again until like, Valentine's Day. It's a happy Valentine's Day, happy mm -hmm. Valentine's Day mind, and they got back together cool. But I said. To this documentary, I thought they made up before this documentary. I thought a long time, right? Because yeah. what he they're in their 30s now, late 30s, yeah, it should be, yeah, like not, not quite in their 40s yet, late 30s. And so, you was filming that with 15, 20 plus a year. I can't imagine. Yeah, what I love the hell out of my mom. I can't imagine. I they, they played another quick clip, um, from Raquel Bolin. Where she was talking about um there was a scene that she was shooting with the the female who was the female um uh star that she was talking about who the main character was what show she I was on Amanda Bonds I can't remember what show she was on I ain't gonna lie to you I just remember her face but I don't remember what show she was the on the only star of the show was Amanda at that time I guess it was Amanda I guess yeah, so that's the only that's the only I don't think any other show that was featuring somebody else yeah I don't I know that was I don't show. remember I just remember her face but i don't remember what she was in 
But she was saying she had to film that scene. And it was a scene where the star of the show had to spit a drink in her face, like, you know, like busting out laughing or whatnot, but spitting the drink in her face. Mm -hmm. And she said after that third time, it pissed her off. And, you know, she was about getting ready to snap, getting ready to go off. And that a producer had to pull her to the side and tell her she needed to calm down. That's the star of the show. You can't get upset. You need to calm down. Baby, I know 13-year-old Monique, 13-year-old Auntie Momo, when she was cousin cousin Nikki, she'd have told that motherfucker set up. Ain't no damn way. Because she's young. What she 13, 12 at that age, and she know then that it's fucking wrong. Yeah, what it's doing. Me in my face. Like, come on now. And you doing it take after take after take? No, ma'am. You can't get upset. I'm, I'm gonna tell her not to spill your face, but you can't get upset. I said so. You basically said that she got to take it, and that's what Tracy, um, Brian, mom said. That was racist. That was the R because yeah. you, we all trained and taught to take trauma to take that, and for you to say she's the star of the show, and you know they favor them. That I had to do what I had to take, and I had to swallow my pride and not say anything for her to have a good scene. Nah, nah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't no damn way. Mm -hmm. But uh, and why don't we get more more with her? I think should have had more at an interview, more scenes with Raquel because I wanted to hear some more about what she had going on. Yes. I think they should have reached out to the rest of the other ones too who had yeah. And bring it if he was gonna have only Giovanni. What happened to Leon talked about it a little bit, his experience too. And what could what happened to what happened to MJ? Right, right. I would like to see if you gonna give day side of things because I would we'll like see. to see one of those. Yeah, we'll see. I want to hear it all. Um, okay, so it ended with um, well, one of the final stories was Shane Lyons. Shane Lyons was the he was the the heavy set white good white guy that was on all that. Now he says that he worked with Brian Peck and that he feels for Drake that Brian himself never did anything physically to him, but he had inappropriate conversations with him. Like he had a, a conversation with him before I, Brian was asking him if he knew what blue balls were. Now, why would you be asking a young boy? Well, blue balls. I was like, oh my gosh, really? He did that's appropriate. Ugh. He also feels like Dan is shifting the responsibility on other people, which he is he because did. he once again he's like, I didn't hire Brian Peck. I didn't know this was going on. I didn't know about this. I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. Approved the script. It wasn't. A, if it was a proper high ups approved it. Approved it. I Parents said were on it said and blah 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 and. and Anybody could have said anything if they didn't like it. You was a goddamn lie. You got a lot. Like I said, you was making no money. So you think they was going to look old size and see that something was wrong? No. It was a problem with the network. You was making no money. They okay with that. It was, they was not going to question that. They were questioning that until something really major come on. You know how this big corporation is. They protect the people who are making the money. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they was not going to question. They said, okay, this is great. You're making a hit. So, of course, they're not going to challenge you. And when we were challenging you, look what happened. That's they got right. fired. They got let go. Really cute. At the same time, started. though, Nickelodeon knew. Yeah, uh, if you didn't know about the third one, you knew you at least had two perverts working on a set over there. Nickelodeon, I think Dan Schneider holds about 70% responsibility, and Nickelodeon owns the other 30%, or either vice versa. Nickelodeon owns 70, and but it's it's no, yeah, mm -mm. they was all in cahoots. It was a scheme that they had all set up to come with the bullshit. Uh -huh. And now they want to put, he want to put some blame on them. And I would say, it was interesting to say he, Shane said he got let go at 16. He didn't even tell why the reason they fired him. They didn't. That's what I, else I was going to say. They didn't get into why. So they just, just let you go just like that. Why though? What? I thought that same thing and I got that in my notes. Why did he get fired? I don't know if it was something I missed, but I was glued 
do it the whole time. I, I wasn't distracted with my phone or nothing. He said that, that he was fired at 16, but... He said they didn't tell him the reason. He don't even know yeah. to the reason to this His day. His contract wasn't renewed. For why, though? Hmm. Maybe at 16, he was starting to look too grown. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? But um, Shane Giovanni and Brian all saying that basically they, they, the, the purpose of them doing this docuseries, A, was to spread the word and blow the whistle about what the hell been going on with Nickelodeon oh, and Dan Schneider. Yeah. But to also put the awareness out there so hopefully this can make change for other child actors right now. Because again, I didn't even know that there's still a loophole in 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 screenings and background screenings, where as long as they're a parent, uh, as long as there's a parent or guardian on set, then they don't have to do background checks on people. What the fuck kind that of sense does that's, that that's make? Dusty loophole. They should still do background check with people who for production, and everything, who work around people, just because the parent and guardian. Because before, they didn't have the law with the parent and guardian had to be on set. It's like that, and they wanted like Nickelodeon wanted the parents on the set, but they was letting them go. They was ostracizing when they speak up. So now they made a law that they have every child have to have to have a parent or guardian on the set at all times with them. It's like that. But yes, that loophole is if it is one automatically, then the background check is not needed. And I said no, it's still needed. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's still needed. It's still needed because you don't have you don't want it because at the moment it could take this split second of a parent not be around. And that person could get your child. Just like that. Just like that. And I said, no, no. What in the world? That's crazy. I, I can see why folks don't, mm -mm, don't want your kids. Nope. Don't want your kids to be out here doing that bullshit because they get caught up in some shit like this. But um, overall, I think this this um continuation episode, I think it was good. Again, I was expecting more from it just because we got so much in the first four episodes. Yes. I thought that yes, maybe this one would be like a can like something else new that has come out since yes. this is aired, like now this person and this person has said, yeah, this happened too, or Ariana Grande finally gonna speak and say something or something. <laughs> like, Ariana, bitch, you need to say something. Ariana. Well, Amanda, somebody, like, more people, the people we want to hear from, but, like, can we get any information or nothing? If nothing. or nothing else, Ariana, because you are a big chunk of this over-sexualizing that was going on. Say something, girl. Like, yeah, I was uncomfortable, or you either yeah or nay. Yeah, you was with it, or now you wasn't with it. Or we was all rooting for you, <laughs> Ariana. Um, but is there anything else that you got? Anything that we missed before we get on up out of here? Not to me, I think we cover everything. I mean, it was interesting to see, and I'm um, hopefully changes does become in the in the future in any other channel networks and everybody oh uh, i'm glad that they talk on they talk oh i think they touched on the diversity that um we got oh, we got oh, mm -hmm. quickly on diversity about how giovanni and brian feel like they were the token black mm -hmm. people on the cast because he they trying to say oh diversity was very important and this is this is that this is how i said boy like, if you only got two people and it was funny they said giovanni and uh, Brian was the only two black, including their parents, of everything. Of so everybody everything. else was different. It was mostly the opposite counterpart against those two. And you feel like the rest is important. And I also they also say that not one person should be the token black person to for the masses. The right, model. right. And I say yes. You need to have a collective of people who could be banded and not have one person to pressure because you put the pressure mm -hmm. on that person. And that's another thing. So they say camaraderie is a big thing on these sets. And you could be a child actor, but if you want to let go and leave it, you should be able to leave. And yeah. that's what they said. And I said, yes, that's great. That's a point. Yeah. Well, but hopefully it does bring some more awareness, like they say, because Nickelodeon, child, when I say ain't nobody fucking with Nickelodeon no more. Y'all got to bag it up. You know they got any recent new programming? They recycle the same shows. It, I haven't been on Nickelodeon, so I don't even know. But I know they keep repeating the shows that we used to watch. So, any new shows on Nickelodeon? <laughs> <laughs> Dan done fucked that up, child. Dan done fucked up the church's okay, money. Uh, 
<laughs> well, anybody watching this, if it's anything that we missed, y'all do us a favor and please drop it down below. Let's keep the conversation going. If it's something that we miss, anything that you guys don't agree with that we said, drop it down in the comments. Let's have a healthy respectful discussion okay we appreciate y'all so much for coming by and tuning in with us this has been nickelodeon's quiet on set breaking the silence we will see you guys next time y'all have a good night peace out